Chapters twenty three through twenty six, Book nine, Volume one of Le Mort d'Arthur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Le Mort d'Arthur, Volume one, by Sir Thomas Mallory. Book nine. Chapters twenty three through twenty six. How a damosel sought help to help Sir Lancelot against thirty knights, and how Sir Tristram fought with them. And at the next landing, fast by the sea, there met with Sir Tristram and with Sir Dinadan, Sir Ector de Maris and Sir Bors de Ganis, and there Sir Ector jousted with Sir Dinadan, and he smote him and his horse down. And then Sir Tristram would have jousted with Sir Bors, and Sir Bors said that he would not joust with no Cornish knights, for they are not called men of worship, and all this was done upon a bridge. And with this came Sir Bleoberis and Sir Driant, and Sir Bleoberis proffered to joust with Sir Tristram, and there Sir Tristram smote down Sir Bleoberis. Then said Sir Bors to Ganis, I wist never Cornish knight of so great valour, nor so valiant as that knight that beareth the trappings embroidered with crowns. And then Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan departed from them into a forest, and there met them a demoiselle that came for the love of Sir Lancelot, to seek after some noble knights of King Arthur's court, for to rescue Sir Lancelot. And so Sir Lancelot was ordained, for by the treason of Queen Morgan le Fay to have slain Sir Lancelot, and for that cause she ordained thirty knights to lie in await for Sir Lancelot, and this damosel knew this treason. And for this cause the damosel came for to seek noble knights to help Sir Lancelot. For that night, or the day after, Sir Lancelot should come where these thirty knights were. And so this damosel met with Sir Bors and Sir Ector and with Sir Driant, and there she told them all four of the treason of Morgan le Fay. And then they promised her that they would be nigh where Sir Lancelot should meet with the thirty knights. And if so be they set upon him, we will do rescues as we can. So the damoiselle departed, and by adventure the damoiselle met with Sir Tristram and with Sir Dinadan, and there the damoiselle told them all the treason that was ordained for Sir Lancelot. Fair damoiselle, said Sir Tristram, bring me to that same place where they should meet with Sir Lancelot. Then said Sir Dinadan, What will you do? It is not for us to fight with thirty knights, and wit you well I will not thereof. As to match one knight, two or three is enough, and they be men, but for to match fifteen knights, that will I never undertake. Fie for shame, said Sir Tristram, but do your part. Nay, said Sir Dinadan, I will not thereof, but if ye will lend me your shield, for ye bear a shield of Cornwall, and for the cowardice that is named to the knights of Cornwall, by your shields ye be ever forborn. Nay, said Sir Tristram, I will not depart from my shield for her sake that gave it to me. But one thing, said Sir Tristram, I promise thee, Sir Dinadan, but if thou wilt promise me to abide with me, here I shall slay thee, for I desire no more of thee but answer one night. And if thy heart will not serve thee, stand by and look upon me and them. Sir, said Sir Dinadan, I promise you to look upon and to do what I may to save myself, but I would I had not met with you. So then anon these thirty knights came fast by these four knights, and they were aware of them, and either of other. And so these thirty knights let them pass, for this cause, that they would not wrath them, if case be that they had ado with Sir Lancelot. And the four knights let them pass to this intent, that they would see and behold what they would do with Sir Lancelot. And so the thirty knights passed on, and came by Sir Tristram and by Sir Dinadan. And then Sir Tristram cried on high, Lo, here is a knight against you for the love of Sir Lancelot. And there he slew two with one spear, and ten with his sword. 
and then came in Sir Dinadan, and he did passing well, and so of the thirty knights there were but ten away, and they fled. All this battle saw Sir Bors de Ganis and his three fellows, and then they saw well it was the same knight that jousted with them at the bridge. Then they took their horses and rode unto Sir Tristram, and praised him, and thanked him of his good deeds, and they all desired Sir Tristram to go with them to their lodging. And he said, Nay, he would not go to no lodging. Then they all four knights prayed him to tell them his name. Fair lords, said Sir Tristram, as at this time I will not tell you my name. CHAPTER Twenty Four. How Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan came to a lodging where they must joust with two knights. Then Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan rode forth their way, till they came to the shepherds and to the herdsmen, and there they asked them if they knew any lodging or harbour there nigh hand. Forsooth, sirs, said the herdmen, hereby is good lodging in a castle. But there is such a custom that there shall no knight be harboured, but if he joust with two knights, and if he be but one knight he must joust with two, and as ye be therein soon shall ye be matched. There is shrewd harbour, said Sir Dinadan, lodge where ye will, but I will not lodge there. Fie for shame, said Sir Tristram, are ye not a knight of the table round? Wherefore ye may not, with your worship, refuse your lodging. Not so, said the herdman, for an ye be beaten, and have the worse, ye shall not be lodged there. And if ye beat them, ye shall be well harboured. Ah, said Sir Dinadan, there are two sure knights. Then Sir Dinadan would not lodge there in no manner, but as Sir Tristram required him of his knighthood. And so they rode thither. And to make short tale, Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan smote them down both, and so they entered into the castle, and had good cheer, as they could think or devise. And when they were unarmed, and thought to be merry and in good rest, there came in at the gates Sir Palamides and Sir Gaheris, requiring to have the custom of the castle. "'What array is this?' said Sir Dinadan. "'I would have my rest.' "'That may not be.' said Sir Tristram. Now must we needs defend the custom of this castle, insomuch as we have the better of the lords of this castle. And therefore, said Sir Tristram, needs must ye make you ready. In the devil's name, said Sir Dinadan, came I into your company. And so they made them ready, and Sir Gaheris encountered with Sir Tristram, and Sir Gaheris had a fall and Sir Palamides encountered with Sir Dinadan, and Sir Dinadan had a fall. Then it was fall for fall. So then must they fight on foot. That would not Sir Dinadan, for he was so sore bruised of the fall that Sir Palamides gave him. Then Sir Tristram unlaced Sir Dinadan's helm, and prayed him to help him. I will not, said Sir Dinadan, for I am sore wounded of the thirty knights that we had but late ago to do with all. But ye fair, said Sir Dinadan unto Sir Tristram, as a madman, and as a man that is out of his mind, that would cast himself away, and I may curse the time that ever I saw you, for in all the world are not two such knights that be so wood as is Sir Lancelot, and ye, Sir Tristram? For once I fell in the fellowship of Sir Lancelot, as I have done now with you, and he set me a work that a quarter of a year I kept my bed. Yesu defend me, said Sir Dinadan, from such two knights, and specially from your fellowship. Then, said Sir Tristram, I will fight with them both. Then Sir Tristram bade them come forth both, for I will fight with you. Then Sir Palamides and Sir Gaheris dressed them, and smote at them both. Then Dinadan smote at Sir Gaheris a stroke or two, and turned from him. Nay, said Sir Palamides, it is too much shame for us two knights to fight with one. And then he did bid Sir Gaheris stand aside with that knight that hath no list to fight. Then they rode together, and fought long, and at the last Sir Tristram doubled his strokes, and drove Sir Palamides aback more than three strides. 
and then by one ascent Sir Gaheris and Sir Dinadin went betwixt them, and departed them in sunder. And then by ascent of Sir Tristram they would have lodged together. But Sir Dinadin would not lodge in that castle, and then he cursed the time that ever he came in their fellowship, and so he took his horse, and his harness, and departed. Then Sir Tristram prayed the lords of that castle to lend him a man to bring him to a lodging, and so they did, and overtook Sir Dinadin, and rode to their lodging two mile thence with a good man in a priory, and there they were well at ease. And that same night Sir Bors and Sir Bleoberis, and Sir Ector and Sir Driant, abode still in the same place thereas Sir Tristram fought with the thirty knights, and there they met with Sir Lancelot the same night, and had made promise to lodge with Sir Colgravence the same night. How Sir Tristram jousted with Sir Kay and Sir Sagramor the Lud Desirous, and how Sir Gawain turned Sir Tristram from Morgan le Fay. But anon is the noble knight Sir Lancelot, heard of the shield of Cornwall, then wist he well that it was Sir Tristram that fought with his enemies. And then Sir Lancelot praised Sir Tristram, and called him the man of most worship in the world. So there was a knight in that priory that hight Pellinore, and he desired to wit the name of Sir Tristram. But in no wise he could not, and so Sir Tristram departed and left Sir Dinadin in the priory for he was so weary and so sore bruised that he might not ride. Then this knight, Sir Pellinore, said to Sir Dinadin, Sithen that ye will not tell me that knight's name, I will ride after him, and make him to tell me his name, for he shall die therefore. Beware, Sir Knight, said Sir Dinadin, for an ye follow him ye shall repent it. So that knight, Sir Pellinore, rode after Sir Tristram, and required him of jousts. Then Sir Tristram smote him down, and wounded him through the shoulder, and so he passed on his way. And on the next day following Sir Tristram met with Persuivance, and they told him that there was made a great cry of tournament between King Caradus of Scotland and the King of North Wales, and either should joust against other at the Castle of Maidens, and these Persuivance sought all the country after the good knights, and in especial King Carados let make seeking for Sir Lancelot du Lac, and the King of North Gallus let seek after Sir Tristram de Leonis. And at that time Sir Tristram thought to be at that joust, and so by adventure they met with Sir Kay the Seneschal, and Sir Sagramor le Desirous, and Sir Kay required Sir Tristram to joust, and Sir Tristram in a manner refused him, because he would not be hurt nor bruised against the great joust that should be before the castle of maidens, and therefore thought to repose him and to rest him. And always Sir Kay cried, Sir Knight of Cornwall, joust with me, or else yield thee to me as recreant. When Sir Tristram heard him say so, he turned to him, and then Sir Kay refused him and turned his back. Then Sir Tristram said, As I find thee, I shall take thee. Then Sir Kay turned with evil will, and Sir Tristram smote Sir Kay down, and so he rode forth. Then Sir Sagramor le Desirous rode after Sir Tristram, and made him to joust with him, and there Sir Tristram smote down Sir Sagramor le Desirous from his horse, and rode his way. And the same day he met with a damosel that told him that he should win great worship of a knight adventurous, that did much harm in all that country. When Sir Tristram heard her say so, he was glad to go with her to win worship. So Sir Tristram rode with that damosel a six mile, and then met him Sir Gawain, and therewithal Sir Gawain knew the damosel, and that she was a damosel of Queen Morgan le Fay. Then Sir Gawain understood that she led that knight to some mischief. Fair knight, said Sir Gawain, whither ride you now with that demoiselle? Sir, said Sir Tristram, I wot not whither I shall ride, but as the demoiselle will lead me. Sir, said Sir Gawain, ye shall not ride with her, for she and her lady did never good, but ill. And then Sir Gawain pulled out his sword, and said, Demoiselle, if thou tell me anon, 
for what cause thou leadest this knight with thee, thou shalt die for it right anon. I know all your lady's treason, and yours. Mercy, Sir Gawain, she said, and if ye will save my life I will tell you. Say on, said Sir Gawain, and thou shalt have thy life. Sir, she said, Queen Morgan le Fay, my lady, hath ordained a thirty ladies to seek and espy after Sir Lancelot or Sir Tristram, and by the trains of these ladies, who that may first meet any of these two knights, they should turn them unto Morgan le Fay's castle, saying that they should do deeds of worship, and if any of the two knights came there, there be thirty knights lying and watching in a tower to wait upon Sir Lancelot or upon Sir Tristram. Fie for shame, said Sir Gawain, that ever such false treason should be wrought or used in a queen, and a king's sister, and a king and queen's daughter. Chapter 26 How Sir Tristram and Sir Gawain rode to have foughten with the thirty knights, but they durst not come out. Sir, said Sir Gawain, Will you stand with me, and we will see the malice of these thirty knights? Sir, said Sir Tristram, go ye to them, and it please you, and ye shall see I will not fail you, for it is not long ago since I and a fellow met with thirty knights of that queen's fellowship, and God speed us so that we may win worship. So then Sir Gawain and Sir Tristram rode toward the castle where Morgan le Fay was, and ever Sir Gawain deemed well that he was Sir Tristram de Leonis, because he heard that two knights had slain and beaten thirty knights. And when they came before the castle, Sir Gawain spake on high, and said, Queen Morgan le Fay, send out your knights that ye have laid in a watch for Sir Lancelot and for Sir Tristram. Now, said Sir Gawain, I know your false treason, and through all places where that I ride, men shall know of your false treason. And now let's see, said Sir Gawain, whether ye dare come out of your castle, ye thirty knights. Then the queen spake, and all the thirty knights at once, and said, Sir Gawain, full well wottest thou what thou dost and sayest, for by God we know thee passing well, but all that thou speakest and dost thou sayest it upon pride of that good knight that is there with thee. For there be some of us that know full well the hands of that knight over all well. And wit thou well, Sir Gawain, it is more for his sake than for thine that we will not come out of this castle. For wit ye well, Sir Gawain, the knight that beareth the arms of Cornwall, we know him and what he is." Then Sir Gawain and Sir Tristram departed, and rode on their ways a day or two together, and there by adventure they met with Sir Kay and Sir Sagramor le Desirous. And then they were glad of Sir Gawain, and he of them, but they wist not that he was with the shield of Cornwall, but by deeming. And thus they rode together a day or two. And then they were ware of Sir Bruce sans pitié chasing a lady for to have slain her for he had slain her paramour afore. "'Hold you all still,' said Sir Gawain, "'and show none of you forth, and ye shall see me reward yonder false knight, for an he espy you he is so well horsed that he will escape away.' And then Sir Gawain rode betwixt Sir Bruce and the lady, and said, "'False knight, leave her, and have ado with me.' When Sir Bruce saw no more but Sir Gawain, he furted his spear, and Sir Gawain against him, and there Sir Breuse overthrew Sir Gawain, and then he rode over him, and overthwart him twenty times to have destroyed him. And when Sir Tristram saw him do so villainous a deed, he hurled out against him. And when Sir Breuse saw him with the shield of Cornwall, he knew him well that it was Sir Tristram, and that he fled, and Sir Tristram followed after him and Sir Brius sans pitié was so hoarse that he went his way quite, and Sir Tristram followed him long, for he would fain have been avenged upon him. And so, when he had long chased him, he saw a fair well, and thither he rode to repose him, and hide his horse till a tree. End of chapters 23-26